Okay, I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. Would you like to give us another demonstration? So, yes. so the dogs yeah, are each going. trained, the dogs are each trained um, in their own own smell. That's yeah. why they're able to go past the others. Yeah, Is that so right? they totally yes. ignore something they that they're They just work not... on one odour yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's it. That's it. The... Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this world record, this Guinness so what world we had to, record? What we had to do was we had to um, do two things. One, we set the record for the most diseases detected by dogs. Yeah. Um, and the second one, which is the one you're watching, is the most diseases consecu consecutively, if you can say that, detected by dogs. So each dog had to keep looking for their own disease. Now, for the Guinness World Records, that's Bumper again on Parkinson's. Well for done. the Guinness World Records, um, every time the dogs went in, the samples were changed around. Got for this, we're not doing that for today. So they don't remember where it is. They oh, they, they would if you left it there for if long you enough. Left it, yeah. <laughs> you have to keep moving it, because so, they're a bit clever, these dogs, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, no, oh, they absolutely. Def they definitely cheat if they could. Yes, so, they, uh, they so would. So just fi final go for Florin, he'll find her prostate cancer. As I say, all her data goes to MIT in the USA, so every yeah. time she finds a sample, she's correct. And we call that an indication. And I, am, am I right in thinking as well that each dog might have a slightly different yeah, indication, absolutely. whatever their preference as you is? See, some dogs sit, some dogs nudge, some dogs stand and stare. So yeah. as long as it's clear to the handler, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. And um, in terms of breeds, any any particular breeds? No, I mean, you have got many Labradors and um, Retrievers here today, but we have a variety of different breeds, and we have, we have Spaniels, crossbred dogs, so there's um, <laughs> Pseudomonas again. <laughs> Looking at that one. Someone, she, I think she thinks someone's left us uh, <laughs> something and, uh, tasty. We have, we're able to use rescue dogs, and you're going to meet yeah. one of our rescue dogs later. And that's a, that is another element of this charity, which is so brilliant, is that rescue dogs can just prove their worth. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and absolutely have a, have a job. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Dr. Thank Claire you. Guest and also our wonderful demonstrators there of our biodetection dogs. So Chris, I'm coming back to you. And um, now we're going to talk about the other side of the charity. So this is about the medical alert assistance dog. That's right, isn't That's it? That's right, yeah. yes. So what does yep. that mean? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So these are dogs that are trained to a person's unique odour, life-threatening condition. So we've got Bobbin <laughs> over there on the bed. Have you saw that? <laughs> Becky's in bed, she's, she's pretending some, someone that's got type 1 diabetes. Okay. Two o'clock in the morning, suddenly she's having a hypo. Okay. Doesn't know anything about it. Completely oblivious. Without her assistance dog, the next time she perhaps come, would come round could be in hospital. Yeah. Bobbin, who's asleep next to her, recognised the odour chains. He jumped on the bed, he woke her up, he said, Mum, you need to wake up, I need you to test your bloods. I'm going to go and retrieve your testing kit off the table. Because at two o'clock in the morning, you're not just going to yeah. jump out of bed. He went and got the testing kit, brought it back, where Becky can then test her blood. So he is saving, in re you know, reality, yeah, Becky's life, and he's preventing her from going to hospital. And but that's one of our many conditions. OK, so let's just talk a little bit about that. So you literally, you couldn't, you couldn't sleep through that. I mean, no, you, not no? at all. <laughs> not at all. And he's he won't so let you. He no, won't let you. So, um, so he literally, he... he, he and he will alert to the fact that she needs help. Yep. Go and wake her up. Um, and, and like you've said, not only does he do that, if she, you know, he goes and gets the kit to actually help her help herself. Mm, definitely. So, I mean, again, like you say, life-changing, life-saving, because she would have potentially ended up in hospital. Definitely. There's yeah. no two ways about it. Yeah. And you can see again now... He's, he's saying hoovering. something's still not, he is. still not right, yeah. So now we're, we're showing you how a dog perhaps would work with someone who's got a condition called POTS, okay. postural tachycardia syndrome. This is a cardiac condition, okay? And it, it happens quite a lot when, when people are, they've got this uh, change in heat, moving around, you know, moving around, sitting up, standing, lying down, hoovering. So yeah. without your assistance dog, you could have been hoovering at the top of the stairs. Yes. Suddenly, you will collapse. You will fall to the ground. There is nothing out there that will, will alert you to this condition. Yeah. Apart from one of our dogs. Okay. So he's told Becky, right, your odour has changed. You've got two or three minutes before you suddenly fall. So Becky's then just gone and found somewhere very quiet, <laughs> laid down. Bobbin's there with her saying, Mum. Smothering are her. You, right? are, you, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you Mom? all right? I'm going to kiss but you. Yeah. In reality, Becky could then be out for 10 minutes. Okay. 
and, and Bobby he would, would just, just lay there. sit there, uh, uh, sorry, lie there with her and just uh, just make sure she's okay. Definitely. So, I mean, this is this is absolutely amazing. And uh, what, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing this demo here, and I'm sure you appreciate that. You know, it, it's a kind of like a bit of a full situation. So, what we thought you might enjoy or might find better is to actually watch a video of somebody who has this condition and has a medical alert assistance dog. So please, again, just turn your attention to the screen. My name is Demi and I have a medical alert dog called Bear. I have POTS. POTS means that my heart rate goes quite high and my blood pressure drops upon postural changes, which causes me to pass out without any warning. Having episodes out in public was really hard. I just collapsed to the floor without any warning and often hurt myself. I used to get really upset for hurting myself, embarrassment, frustration with my body. I wanted to be a dance teacher, but I didn't envision how I could be a dance teacher when I was passing out and hurting myself without any warning. Um, it seemed impossible to be responsible for children and to be able to be a good dance teacher when my body was working against me. It was really hard knowing that we tried every single avenue that we could have tried. So I'd had surgeries, I tried medications, I tried lifestyle changes, diet changes, and for doctors to say, we've run out of options. We'd kind of tried everything. I had hit a brick wall. So I'd heard about dogs which could detect people's health condition, and I got in contact with medical detection dogs and ended up being matched with my beautiful bear. I loved him from the first day that I met him. I remember the first time Bear alerted and both the trainer and myself were quite emotional. Bear adapts and alerts based on what we're doing. So if we're at home, Bear can get away with kind of sitting and staring at me. If we're out in public, for example, if I'm pushing a trolley, um, Bear will start staring at me a bit, which I obviously won't catch that as easily. And he'll either nudge me or jump up at me. Bear will do what he feels he needs to do to get my attention. I then know that I've got about four to five minutes before an episode comes on. I can sit down and Bear will then further alert me if he feels that I need to lay down. Life is so good, so good. I teach dance and I have my own dance school. I love what I do, absolutely love it. And Bear's by my side every single day and he's very much part of our dance family. I think Bear's absolutely incredible. To think how much a dog, a dog has changed my life and that a dog does what doctors can't do. Amazing surgeons and people that study medicine, they can't help me as much as Bear does. Ah, oh, I just wish Bear knew just how amazing he is. He's incredible. The power of his nose and his loyalty to me. Bear has given me my life back.